Hello, so welcome back to this channel. If you've been following most of the developer news lately, you could have heard that Google recently deprecated the Google Places SDK for Android and for iOS. Before then, we were able to have a queue feature that allowed us to search for places just like this. I could just go ahead and search for Times Square. And what I get in return is the name of the place, the address of the place, and even the geolocation coordinates, right? And I can even use that to navigate on my map. So these were some of the cool features we were having until we heard that the, it has been deprecated. So that actually got me heartbroken because I have a lot of projects that was already built with the Google Places SDK. So the good news is that recently Xamarin just released a new Nugget package that implements the new Google Places API for Android. So in this particular video, we are going to be looking at how to implement the all new Google Places API. So if this is your first time of dropping by and you're yet to subscribe to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button and also click the bell notification button so that you can always get notified whenever I make this kind of video. So this video is going to be focused on how to implement the all new Google Places API, right? But if you want to learn about how to implement all of these features in the app I have running on my emulator, all of these cool features i have a full tutorial series on that and i'm going to put a link in the description so you can go ahead and follow the series and you are going to learn a lot of things ranging from how to add makers how to add overlay makers and how to even find a place address using coordinates and also you're going to learn how to work with google directions and a lot of google map apis so it's going to really be exciting so i suggest you check out the video so without wasting much time, let's jump right into setting up Google Places API. So the first thing we need to do will be to go ahead and create an Android project. So I'm going to call this Places Project, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. So it is going to be a blank app. Okay, so our project has been successfully created. So the next thing we need to do will be to load up our layout XML. So we're going to load up our main layout. So what we are going to do in the layout is that we're going to add a button that when we click on it, it will inflate our place autocomplete search text so that we can impute the name of the place that we want to search for, right? So what I'm going to do here is to go ahead and add a button. I'm going to just add a button, right? And I'm going to set an orientation to our, our linear layout. And also, we're going to add some padding to it. Let's set the padding to be 20 dp. So the next thing we need to have will be test views. Okay, we're gonna have test views that will display the name, the address of the place, and the geolocation coordinates. So I'm gonna have three test views. So the first one, okay. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna duplicate, I'm gonna copy this and paste it. Or let's just give it as name test. I'm gonna call this place name, and this is gonna be a coordinate test. So this is where we're going to be displaying the location coordinates of this place, right? Boom. With that out of the way, let's go to our main activity and have a reference of this widget or views we have in our design, right? So this is already what we are used to. So I'm going to be really fast with it. So we're going to define a button. So we're going to go ahead and define a new instance of the test views that we have in our design. Okay, so now that we have that defined, let's go ahead and reference this. So to do that, we're going to have display button equal to button dot find view by ID resource dot ID dot display button. Okay, so the next will be to reference our address test, name test and coordinate test. Just the same format. Okay, so we have that out of the way. So the next thing we need to do will be to add a click event handler for our display button. So we're going to be needing this shortly, but not now, right? So now that we are done referencing our views, the next thing we need to do will be to go to our Google Developer Console and create a new project. So in that project, we're gonna go ahead and enable Google Places API. So we're gonna go ahead and pull up Google Chrome and we're going to go log on to console.developers.google.com. 
so this is my developer console you can actually have access to the developer console if you have a gmail address so i'm gonna go ahead and create a new project of course i have a project here already before now so i'm gonna go ahead and create a new project so impute a project name so i can just go ahead and call it place project i'm gonna go ahead and click on create so our place project is successfully created so i'm gonna drop down this place and i'm gonna load it up so this is the dashboard for our newly created project so we're gonna go to libraries so in the libraries we can go ahead and enable our places api so we're gonna go ahead and enable this so this is the places api that we'll be making use of we need to enable it first so that has been enabled. The next thing we need to do will be to click on credentials. So we're going to go ahead and create a credential. Which credential do we want to create? Yeah, we want to create an API key. So our API key has been created. We can just go ahead and copy it because we're going to be using it inside of Visual Studio. So we're going to go ahead and close this up. So we now have an API key and our project is ready to rock and roll so the next thing we need to do will be to go back into visual studio okay and this is the time where we install the new google places a nugget package right but before we do that we need to first of all go to our project properties and we need to change our target android version from 8.1 to 9.0 so guys if you don't have this option in your visual studio it means that you haven't updated your Android SDK to the latest versions yet, of which you can do that by clicking on this icon here, and you can open the SDK manager and quickly install the latest version. And when you do that, you will have 9.0 here. I can go ahead and change your target Android version to 9.0. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, the next thing we need to do will be to go to our nugget package manager and start installing the packages that we need so currently we have a support design library we need to first of all update it to the latest version to version 28 so this is also a necessity so let's go ahead and update that to the latest version okay so now we have that out of the way the next thing we need to do will be go will be to go ahead and install our google places api so we're going to search for xamarin google or android or places that's what you need to search and uh, we're going to go ahead and click on install so as you can see the google places api comes with a lot of dependencies so if you just go ahead and click on ok so now we have that out of the way i must mention that there is one more um, there's one more nugget package that you need to install on it. You, you need to install separately to ensure that your setup really works without any hiccups, right? So it is Xamarin the Android the Volley, right? So this particular package you actually need to install it on its own, right? So to ensure that everything works appropriately. So we're gonna go ahead and install that right away. So we more like have everything ready. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to our main activity and start implementing our places or API. So now the first thing we need to do will be to initialize our place API. And how to initialize it is actually very simple. So we're gonna go ahead and say places API. First of all, we need to bring in the reference to the packages that we just installed. So now we have that out of the way, we're going to first of all make an if statement, right? So you possibly might need to be doing this by the time you want to initialize your places API. So I'm going to say places API is initialized. We need to first of all check and confirm that our places API hasn't been initialized. So we can now go ahead and say places API dot initialize. Here we're going to see this. And also we need to pass it our API key. So we can go back to our project and copy this API key. All right, we're gonna to return to Visual Studio and we're gonna paste the API key here. Boom. So we've successfully initialized 
our places API. So after initializing our places API, the next thing would be to invoke the place autocomplete. So to do that, I'm going to go to our display button, click event handler. And uh, first of all, I'm going to define a new list. So this is going to be a list of place fields, right? So I'm going to say place the fields. The place field means properties of a place, right? So the new places API allows us to choose which fields that we want to return from our place query. So we can decide that we want the places, we want the place ID, the place name, the address, and the longitude and latitude coordinates, which is basically what we'll be needing most of the time. So we're going to go ahead and call these fields. This will be equal to new list of fields. So we're now going to say field dot add. So this is going to be place dot field dot ID. We're going to say again field dot add place dot field dot name because we we'll definitely need the name, the place name rather, the lat lounge. So the next field we need to add will be the address. Bam. So now we have our field set up. The next thing we need to do will be to define an autocomplete intent. So I'm going to say intent. This is going to be intent equal to. Okay, we need to first of all bring this instance. So this is going to be equal to new autocomplete dot intent builder. So we're going to check, set the activity mode to overlay because we want it to overlay our main activity or whatever activity that we are initializing our autocomplete on. And then we're going to pass it the fields. So this is why the fields is very useful. Now the next thing we need to do will be to pass our filter. So for a paraventure, you want to set a filter to your places query. You want to start just places in the US, in the UK, um, in Dubai, on whichever country you're in. We're going to go ahead and say set country. Now we're going to pass it the place, the country ID. US ID is always US. UK is UK. Um, you know, countries have their code. So you can just go ahead and use the code for your country. Then finally, we're going to go ahead and say build and we're going to pass it this. Boom. So this is basically almost all we need to do. Finally, we're going to go ahead and say start activity for results. And we're going to pass it our intent. And we're going to pass it a request ID, which you could just go ahead and set zero. But this is not all. This statement, start activity for result, allows us to, you know, key in the name of the place we want to search for. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to um, override on activity result. So I'm going to go, so go ahead and say override on activity result. So this is where we are actually going to go ahead and grab the data that was returned from our place query. So I can now go ahead and say var place. This should be equal to autocomplete dot get place from intent. We're going to pass our intent data to this particular method. And here I'm going to go ahead and say address test dot test. This should be equal to place dot address. Okay. So the next will be name name test dot test this should be equal to place the name and finally i'm going to say coordinate coordinate test dot test will be equal to okay, i'm going to say latitude place dot so we're going to have the latitude first and place dot lat launch dot longitude so guys this is just how simple it is to implement the new google places api so to verify that all that we've done so far has worked, we're going to go ahead and run our app. But before we do that, there's one very important step that we don't need to forget. So we need to go back to our project properties. And we're going to go to Android options. And we're going to enable multi-dex. So this is very important. If you don't enable it, your project might not actually build. So now that we have that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and build our project. So we have some issues coming from uh, values.xml. So we're going to go ahead and clean our project. We don't know what that was for. So let's go ahead and build.
Okay, so our app is deploying. And boom. So we have our app. Now we're going to go ahead and click on search place. Boom. So as you can see, we now have our our place search autocomplete and it doesn't vanish. So we're going to go ahead and search for say Times Square. I think Times Square is my new favorite place. So we're going to click on it. Boom. So as you can see, we have the place address. This is the address of the place and this is the name of the place and this is the latitude and longitude coordinates of this place. So we can go ahead and search for another place. So if you notice that all the results that are being returned are only places in the US, this is because we added a query um, and we set a country to it and we set US to it. So that's why the query is also very, very important. So let's search for a place in New Jersey. Boom. So we now have this. And also I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, if you want to learn how to make use of Google Maps and make use of Direction API alongside Places API, just bringing together a lot of cool stuff that could help you build a location aware app. I have a full series on that that could help you get started, right? So I'm going to add the video, I'm going to add the link to the videos or to the playlist in the description below in this video. So you can just go ahead and watch the videos and learn a lot from it. It's really, really going to be an exciting experience as well. So this tutorial actually shows you how to build a seriously location aware app. You know, you can actually set your location by just moving around the map. And when you click on done, it will draw, it will draw, um, uh, the, it will draw a polyline, more like a direction from the first point to the second point. So this is more like a right chain application. So I also want to mention that this series is part of a premium content and the course is actually hosted on Udemy. But what I've done is that I've put a link in the description as well to help you get the course at a very discounted price. You're really, really gonna like the price you see. So check it out, click the link below and it will take you to where to get the course. So guys, hope you really, really enjoyed this particular video and you learned a lot from it. So if you're a new viewer and this is your first time dropping by, really, really consider hitting the subscribe button and also click the bell notification button as well to always get notified whenever I make this kind of video. So this will be all for now. So see you soon.